SBS Audio. From the Evening Standard, I'm Farai Sean Madiash. This is a special episode of The Leader, the first in a year long series called Let Girls Learn. We are aiming to shine a light on innovations and solutions that are helping girls to fulfill their right to education and health productive futures around the globe. Once a month, we will be hearing powerful stories from around the world. And first up, we are going to Zimbabwe. I'm Farai Sean Matias, a journalist based in Mutare, Zimbabwe. Today we are looking at what's known as the beautiful girl. Football is one of the most popular sports in Zimbabwe. Men start playing it at a tender age. Some top leagues such as English Premier League, Bundesliga and La Liga have huge followership here. However, if you are a girl who wants to play football, things aren't so easy. That's the sound of the street set football club in Bulawayo. It originally started as an all-boys soccer team in 2009, but when a tournament made it mandatory for participating clubs, to have a girls team, the coaches began to recruit female players. In 2014, the boys soccer team was disbanded and the founders decided to promote only girls soccer. From then on, the coaches also made it their mission to help protect their members with off-the-pitch learning too. Lee Mangena is the founder of the organization. They love this team. It's my personal project. But the way it's run, it's run like a community. It's a community revolution in progress. The parents, the players themselves, um, they love their team. The club equips girls not only with skills in dribbling and passing, but also helps them to navigate adolescents in an environment where early marriage, teen pregnancy, and drug abuse are rife. In 2019, nearly 1 in 10 girls aged 15 to 19 in Zimbabwe gave birth, and that number increased in the pandemic when schools closed. Hospitals also reported a steep rise in admissions amongst adolescents due to drug abuse commonly because of Christ or meth. Suicide is playing a good part in delaying child pregnancies, in discouraging um, substance abuse. Although child marriage was outlawed in 2016, the practice remains widespread in Zimbabwe, particularly among girls from poor households like in the densely populated suburbs in Bulawayo. The streets in these suburbs are rugged, not lit at night, and with portals all over. Men homes are run down, they are supplied with tap water only twice a week, while well, they are often hit by a long hour load shedding. Illegal garbage dumping sites are common, precipitated by inconsistency in the refuse collection by the authorities. Child rights campaigners believe the situation worsened during the pandemic, which left many families in abject poverty. But Street said is trying to help break the cycle. To date, the organization has trained over 500 girls in the area, including Trish. My name is Trish Imparazi. I was born in a family of one, and I live with my mother. I was raised by a single parent. Trish started playing football at the age of nine. Back then, there was no girls team at a primary school in Quebec. So in order to pursue a passion, she had to join the boys. There was no girls team at my school. I was only allowed to train, not to play tournaments, until one day when he had a friendly match with the nearby school, of which the coach didn't have any options for substitutions. He had to put me in. That's when I scored my first two goals. One of those goals was the winner, which earned uh, the respect of a coach and fellow teammates. Trish continued to play and develop her skills in midfield. However, it wasn't until her family moved to the seat of Ulawayo that her luck changed. Trish began playing for Street Set, also known as Sporo Girls. I joined Sporo Girls last year, 2021. I was on my way from school. 
when I met the girls who were training at Mkulumani High, I joined their training and they asked me to join this polo girls team of which I didn't know it existed. By the following weekend, Trish was playing a first game for the team. My first time when I joined, she said, it was very hard. Like, I faced so many challenges. But at the end of the day, I kept adjusting. However, not all girls in the country will be able to experience the advantages the sport can give. According to the state-owned Zimbabwe Statistic Agents, as of 2014, the country had more than 98,000 schools that support nearly 5 million learners. Although statistics are hard to come by, the majority do not offer football classes to girls. I began to get used to the people that I was playing with, and this gives me much power to, to go forward. Let's go to an advert break. Stay there to hear more about the incredible work that Street is doing in Zimbabwe. Welcome back. Even as a member of the Sporo Girls and with football as a distraction, you still need to be focused and know how to stay out of trouble. I always keep myself busy so that I avoid peer pressure because I can say there's been a high teenage pregnancy in this country. Trish says some girls receive gifts from the so-called sugar daddies. We as girls, we give each other pressure like when someone's got iPhone 11 and I'm using a Nokia, then I always wonder where did she get that? At the end of the day, those people don't give you their money or whatever they want to buy for you. They expect something in return and the only thing that ex they expect from return is you sleep with them. The girls attend workshops that educate them about drug abuse and safe sex. Parents like Trish's mom, Spears Banda, say the organization gives their daughters hope for the future. There's one reason that I've always supported her. Soka, I think, have helped her so much. She's a teenager, but she's not like other teenagers. Soka has helped her with discipline and is taking up most of her time. If she's not at school, she's playing soccer. So that takes most of her time. And I don't, I'm not saying she's not, she don't do boys, but... She's not like other teenagers. She's always busy from soccer to school, from school to soccer. I don't have a problem with boys. Being part of the team also helps the girls further their education prospects. Schools, especially the ones that are serious with their football, they always knock on our doors when they want players. So a majority of our girls, when they are shining, uh, they are offered scholarships. Those that shine, we're removing them from local schools, and then they're going to to, to certain schools that uh, produce your Peter Lovus, that produce your Adam Lovus, all these legends. According to figures from Zimbabwe's Ministry of Education, more than 10,000 learners, most of which are female, drop out of school due to early marriages and unwanted pregnancies. Most of the girls from Street said have scholarships for the next school year, and men have aspirations for other careers alongside football. I know that there is life after soccer. So when I'm done schooling, I want to start aerospace engineering. And I've jotted down and planned that after writing my O-level examinations, I'm going to apply for a scholarship like in United States, Spain, France. I'll be applying for a football scholarship so that I'll be studying aerospace engineering at the same time playing football. The women in Trish's life is, have always been big fans of her pursuing a passion. My mother supported me throughout and she was like, if you want to do it, go for it. And my grandmother as well, they kept my head up and they only told me positive things so that I can achieve my goals. Trish is now 17. Her love of football is stronger than ever, and in just one year, she has risen through the ranks of her squad to become captain. For inspiration, some of the team watch the English Premier League and Women's Super League at home on pay-per-view television or catch highlights on their phones. 
I want to be a professional player so that I can be like Banyana Banyan in Lionesses. Seeing female footballers like South Africa's women's team, also known as Banyana Banyana, achieve success and become so popular is inspired the sport of girls to dream big. Actually, I never knew that uh, when girls are playing, the stadiums can be filmed like that. It was my first time seeing people, like thousands of people cheering for girls playing soccer. Compared to our community, maybe there will be three or four parents coming to cheer for us. But the support which I saw when Banyana Banyana was playing, it really amazed me because um, it it gives me the thing that I should go for it maybe one day. And that's it from this special episode of The Leader. You can read more about this story online at standard.co.uk. From Zimbabwe, I'm Farai Sean Matiash. Thank you for listening. This podcast will be back on Monday at 4 p.m.